We are four episodes deep into the latest Futurama era, and this week's episode is both a follow-up to an absolute classic episode and its first ever Dune parody. It is pronounced Dune. But did Parasites Regained live up to its predecessor, Parasites Lost? Is even a Dune parody too dense for your average viewer? Did I like it? Find out all this and more on this week's Futurama Breakdown. And also, if you want more Futurama analysis outside of this breakdown, make sure to check out my podcast, Cartoons That Curse. Tuner Victorique and I have covered the entire series so far, including the newest episodes, and we'll be covering the rest of the season weekly, episode by episode as it comes out. So go check it out. Subscribe. So honestly, the first time I watched this episode, I was not super high on it. Certainly not as high as the characters tripping on Spice, particularly because Parasites Lost is one of my all-time favorites, and there was a high degree of anticipation to see how they'd follow it up. But on rewatch, I've grown to appreciate the route they went with a follow-up to such a beloved episode. Even with the inclusion of the worms from the previous story, this one is more of a spiritual successor than it is a narrative follow-up, as both episodes focus heavily on how Leela relationship with someone she cares about changes as that person is affected by these worms. Honestly, I have grown to appreciate how Nibbler still primarily acts like a pet, even though he's revealed his hyper-intelligent nature to the entire crew so many times at this point. I guess he just likes going out on walks and, technically, murdering park patrons. I know this joke is sort of specifically about that dynamic I just mentioned, but I don't love how they specifically point out that the crew always forgets. Nibbler, you can talk! You always forget I can talk. Nibbler, you can talk! One, I just don't think the repeating joke is that funny, but two, this entire episode's premise is built around Leela's bond with Nibbler and how Nibbler's intelligence is a key component to their friendship. So I think introducing the idea that Leela actually forgets about this aspect of Nibbler is kind of counterintuitive to that conflict. That being said, I do really like how they showcase their bond in this episode, with Leela wanting to see an artsy alien film, something Fry and Bender are not interested in. Even more fun, it's seemingly a sequel to Quizblorg Quizblorg, first mentioned back in the Fox era. I've heard good things about Quizblorg Quizblorg. Guck, I hate subtitles. So this whole concept is actually a very fitting follow-up to a little throwaway joke, the kind of attention to detail I love in Futurama. Though I need someone smarter than me to explain the math joke in these titles here. The Cineplex is called N sub zero plex and the movie is Quizblorg Quizblorg N sub one. Please help me mathematician Futurama fans, you're my only hope. But I do love that this is the winner of the Palme d'Or or knob. Film nerd jokes are way more my speed. Did anyone else translate the alienese when they were watching the movie here? The first subtitle reads laughter, which is of course when the crowd starts crying, and the second reads sorrow, right before they crack up laughing. A fun layer for the fans who over obsess with these details like I do. I love the detail that Nibbler and Leela are having tea at the same little cafe as Fry and Leela from Parasites Lost, down to the same teacup and pot. In both episodes, it's one of the places where Leela is really recognizing her bond and connection to the other person. Though obviously in one, it's post-worms and one it's pre-worms. But the way this episode really subverts its predecessor is by having the worms affect Nibbler differently, actually dumbing down his intelligence, as opposed to Fry, who became his best self with the worms' help. The first being more about Fry's own journey and determining if he could be happy with Leela, knowing that it was just the worms who improved him, and the latest being a bit more about Leela's struggle, losing the nature of one of her friendships because of the worms. I did enjoy some of the ways Nibbler showcased his newfound stupidity. Make it American. In individual plastic wrapped slices. Though, in one of them, I actually really, really hated the joke. Alas, my mind has already degenerated to the point where I can no longer predict the ending of an M. Night Shyamalan movie. One, this is a pretty hacky joke for 2023. And two, whether or not you love or hate Shyamalan, his problem is not that his endings are predictable. But the bulk of this episode comes down to Leela, Fry, Bender, and Zoidberg shrinking down and entering Nibbler's litter box to confront the worms that continue to reinfect him. They go with an actual shrinking ray this time, whereas in Parasites Lost, everyone had tiny robot surrogate bodies that they inhabited for their Fantastic Voyage parody. I think they changed this up for two reasons. One, so there would be a bit more danger and stakes with the characters in the litter box, and two, so that the characters could actually feel the effects of the litter box dune spice. There are a couple pretty neat drug trip sequences in here that I enjoyed, with some pretty cool animation, though I have to admit I maybe expected a bit more from them after seeing how amazing the drug trip sequences have been in Disenchantment. I do also appreciate that they had something to parody here, obviously being Dune, though I feel like maybe they were a bit 
bit overt in how they wrote it in, whereas previously the Fantastic Voyage parody in Parasites Lost felt more like homage. And apparently this guide beetle, Bilgar, was played by Kyle MacLachlan? The worms are attracted to the rhythmic pattern of doom beetle footsteps. Whatever you do, do not walk like a doom beetle. But honestly, he sounds so much like Frank Welker to me. I would be shocked if this was actually Kyle MacLachlan. Maybe he's actually this beetle? Dude, I feel like I'm spinning. Kyle MacLachlan making an appearance in a Dune parody would be perfect given his role as Paul in the 1984 film adaptation directed by David Lynch, but honestly, I cannot figure out who he played. He allegedly played a Beatle, I cannot figure out which one he is. And this is the second time this season a relatively big name guest star is tough to spot in the episode. Cara Delevingne apparently played the makeup robot in the premiere, and her only line was screaming as the Execubots crushed her. Super weird. But after traversing the desert, the gang comes face to face with the worms from Parasite's Lost. I know you. You're those worms that used to live in my tum-tum, only you made me smarter. I'll take your word for it. And I did think the way that they all unwound from the giant dune-like sandworm into their former designs was pretty cool. And there were some super creative kills in the big battle too. I loved the way Bender attached his super soaker to his arm and sprayed them all down like a sprinkler system. I mean, Bender has to be at least 40% sprinkler system. I am curious if people are complaining about the use of ivermectin in the storyline, given its topicality during the pandemic, which personally I would find very stupid because ivermectin is literally a dewormer. It's being used properly here. But the initial resolution kind of worked for me, even though all of it is a little bit gross, as Nibbler accepts his fate in this sort of circle of life sequence, showcasing how all of the beings that inhabit the litter box form an ecosystem. And I really dug the animation in the sequence too, even though, again, all those creatures are super gross. Even if it means sacrificing all that I am and becoming a mindless house pet. So, I gotta say, I really thought they were gonna go through with this change. Given the relative infrequency with which they use Nibbler's intelligence these days, it made sense to me to revert him to full-time house pet, and I think it would have really helped hit home the emotional ending. But I also don't blame them for maintaining the status quo here. Nibbler and the crew accepting his fate was touching, and Leela shrinking back down for one last ditch effort to save him parallels Fry's final sequence in Parasites Lost. And I really appreciate the final, final resolution, as Leela tries to determine why the parasites made Fry smarter, but Nibbler dumber. You worms have been weakened by sub-parasites. These parasites were actually teased earlier in the episode, and diving deep into the parasitic ecosystem felt like the proper amount of Futurama scientific specificity to make for a satisfying conclusion. I enjoyed this little joke too, after Leela spends time in the Dune Spice Chamber. Did your senses get scrambled? Nah. It's fine. There are a few solid jokes that felt like classic Futurama in this one. I loved this one-two punch about Bender's familial lineage. My grandfather was a pounder. Hey, I guess that makes me a quarter pounder. And I loved the return of this classic Hermes runner with a very little twist. My mind witch! I also appreciated seeing Bender embrace tap dancing once again, first to summon the sandworm and then again to smash the sub parasites. A nice little connection to stench and stenchability from the end of the Comedy Central run. Overall, I feel similarly about this episode as I do about the previous few. They're solid. I have very few major complaints, but also it isn't doing anything that's blowing my mind either. I appreciated that this was more so a spiritual successor to Parasites Lost than it was a full-on sequel, focusing on a separate relationship at the heart of the worm dilemma. It felt like they did a good job structuring this like the original without overtly relying on references to it. It hit pretty good with some of the emotional moments between Leela and Nibbler, and had a pretty fun scientific conclusion conclusion with the parasitic web of life, not to mention cool trippy animation. But I am definitely still waiting for Futurama to really blow me away in this new era. When the Comedy Central episodes hit, I felt similarly until Lethal Inspection and of course the late Philip J. Fry dropped, which are two episodes I truly, truly adore. I do think that the first four episodes in this Hulu run are generally stronger than the first four in the Comedy Central run, but they are still just maintaining a mostly solid quality level, nothing that's really elevating the series, which I guess begs the question question, would you rather have an era of episodes with major ups and downs, where some are so bad they frustrate you, but some are so good they blow your mind? Or an era of episodes that are all just good? Nothing amazing, nothing awful. 
just good. I'm really grappling with this idea now that we're in our fourth era of Futurama, but we're also so early in the run, a banger could drop any week, or maybe even next year that will make it all feel super worth it. I also want to once again shout out the writers and actors strikes. Please show your support for the creatives who make these shows possible. I'll be posting a link in the description for resources that can help support these striking workers. And I still want to hear your thoughts about the latest Futurama episode and the new season in general. Are you enjoying it more or less than the beginning of the Comedy Central era? Did the way this episode followed up a classic episode work for you? Let me know below in the comments and I'll see you next time. Peace. I stay mellow watching Johnny two cellos. He talks cartoons. He's a really cool fellow. He keeps you posted on adult cartoons. If that's what you're into, then grab a spoon and a very big bowl of your favorite cereal. Feels like Saturday morning cartoon material. Johnny two cellos. Watch him on YouTube. Now enjoy this groove and bust a move.